Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. I had a madcap idea this afternoon and I've challenged myself to do it tonight. First of all, before we get to that challenge, apologies about the light and the dark scenario and this poor quality filming, I'm guessing, but you'll just have to put up with it if you want to see what the results are going to be. Let me explain what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've set myself a challenge. I'm going to explain to you guys what that challenge is before I go into the field and take the images. It's a bit of a challenge. It might work or it might not work, but I promise you, no matter what the outcome, I will uh, include it in this video so you guys can see whether I've done well or whether I've failed miserably. I promise you, I will include everything that we're about to do in this filming tonight. Right, so this is my challenge. Well, it's the first of the spring tides tonight. And I've got a choice. I either work with the spring tide at half midnight tonight, pitch black, or come back tomorrow afternoon, pretty much the same time, tomorrow afternoon, midday. Clearly, tomorrow is going to be a bit of a problem because it's due to be a really nice weather and the whole of the UK has pretty much been released to a certain extent. So I know it's going to be busy here tomorrow. So I've set myself a monster challenge. I've come to New Brighton Lighthouse and my thought process is this. I want to capture the tide as it's coming in, possibly as it's going out, we'll have to wait and see. But I want to take some fine art images of the breakwaters here and a couple of other shots I've got in mind, some of which I've shot before, but not under these conditions. Um, but the problems I'm going to be faced with is this. Well. First of all, going back to the pictures that we're about to take, what I want to do is take some long exposure images, without stating the obvious how I like to flatten the sea out, to capture some fine art images. But then I also want to combine it with some starry shots, okay? Because it's a really clear sky tonight, and I want to combine them both. But that comes with many challenges. One, well, without stating the obvious, I'm going to be trying to film and trying to photograph by the sea at half 12 at night in the morning, whichever way. Uh, so that comes with its own challenges. It's dark, so it's going to be difficult to film. It's going to be very difficult to take photographs. It's going to be difficult to focus. I'm going to have to multiple expo I'm going to have to create multiple exposures. That means maybe four minutes, maybe eight minutes for the sea. That's no good for starry shots. So I'll then have to take a separate starry shot. Then can I combine them? Then can I combine them in a fine art style? So it's a massive, massive ask. I'm up against the tide that's coming in rather quickly as well. So I'm going to be pushed for time. And I'm on top of all of that, I'm going to be attempting some really long exposures on wet sand. Not easy. Let me give you a situation report now. The time is, if you can see that, it's 10 past 11 and the high, high tide is here at half 12. And already the tide is, is actually up and coming around me. So already this is pretty scary. So my first port of call now then is to get my settings right and find out how much of an exposure I'm going to need. I'll try my best to talk you through this process the best that I can. But I apologize that it's very loud and... I also can't show you guys what I'm looking at, but take my word on it, in the five minutes I've been stood here, just get myself set up, the water is actually coming up and around me, so this is a little bit scary. Right, so my first port of call is this, straight into live mode, straight into manual, I'm going to look at possibly shooting this at f5.6. Let's drop my ISO right down to 200. It's not going to be anywhere near. So 5.6 is quite open in terms of an aperture. ISO 200, it's not the best. And that's fine. I'm going to have to go straight into bulb mode. F5.6, ISO 200. Then I'm going to bring my timer up and I'm going to rattle off a four minute exposure to see what that's like. And if four minutes doesn't cut the mustard, I have a choice then either to go to eight minutes or increase my ISO or depending 
on what the four minute exposure is like, both. <laughs> What's really difficult about this is I'm struggling with light and I can't see the lighthouse. Blink your neck. But I want to bring you guys along just to see how much of a, a headache it can be at times. Best bet, focus onto manual. Let's go straight into infinity. So I'm just going to focus on, infin on infinity and I'm going to roughly gauge where the horizon is and where the lighthouse is. Right, let's have a quick look at that. Oh. <laughs> Gotta make sure my level is right, all the normal protocols, and everything's tightened off. It's gonna easily be four minutes, possibly eight minutes. Two second timer. Press one, two, and four minutes, away it goes. Now the tripod and camera are on concrete, so I'm not worried at the moment about the camera dropping or dipping down into the sand. Those waves aren't powerful enough to shake the camera, so at, at this present moment in time, I'm fairly happy with that. Right, assuming I can manage a four minute exposure and the picture looks fine for the floor, I then want to give consideration to the sky. But of course, that's going to come with its own problems. Clearly a four minute exposure is no good if I want to try and capture stars. I think with my 16 mil lens on there, I think a 25 second exposure is probably the longest I'm going to be able to attain. I'm going to have to keep my, my aperture really wide open, as wide open as I can with that particular lens, which is F4. And my ISO is probably going to be through the roof about ISO 4000. Oh, the tide's coming right up. Oh, do you know what? This is really quite scary. It's really quite scary. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of challenges ahead. And because the tide is now coming up over my feet and over my tripod legs, and the waves are fairly large out there. I don't know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have started this challenge. Oh, if it's, if it's too easy, then everybody would be doing it. <laughs> Me, working in the dark. ISO 100, F8, on bulb mode, I'm at a four minute exposure using my bulb timer built into the camera. Two second delay, click, one, two, and away she goes. Right, if we have a quick look at that. So that's good, I like that, that's really nice. This is what I was saying about the light that's being cast onto the water. And here is actually a shadow from the fort on my right hand side. But uh, I'll be able to sort that out in post production. Not sure what I'm going to do with the skyline yet. We'll just have to wait and see. Right, so now let's grab a shot of the sky. So I'm going to go straight to manual mode. and already set 25 seconds at f 5.6 and the only thing i need to change now is my iso and there you go so 25 seconds f 5.6 and iso 500 and that is perfect for the sky the reason why we can't go longer than 25 seconds is because the stars in the sky will streak if i expose for any longer than 25 seconds There you go, and if we have a look at that, that should be perfect. If I'll just zoom in. You know what's really strange is that the water is probably fine enough at a 25 second exposure. Let's have a look up there. 
yeah, it's all nice and sharp. Everything's all nice and sharp. And I go up into the sky and you could see, right, 25 seconds is offering me a little bit of motion blur on these stars. So 25 seconds is too long an exposure. And the reason why it's too long an exposure is because I've calculated using a 24 mil wide lens and I'm not, I'm zoomed in, I'm at 35 mil lens. So because I'm zoomed in at 35 mil, then 25 seconds clearly is too long. So what I'm going to do is slow my shutter speed down by one stop, one, two, three, and I'm gonna open my aperture by one stop, one, two, three. So now it's 13 seconds at F4. The light will still be exactly the same, but hopefully over a 13 second exposure, there won't be any blurring of those stars. Well, the proof is in the pudding. One, two, and away she goes. And again, let's have a quick check at that. Let's zoom in, zoom in. Everything's nice and sharp. And there you see. So we look at the before. That's the before, and that's the after. And that's acceptable. I'm happy with that. I'm really, really happy with that. I can't go any wider, and I don't really want to increase my ISO, but that's the other alternative, is to increase my shutter speed again and compensate by increasing my ISO. But I'm happy with that, that's perfect. Under these conditions, I don't think I'm really gonna get better than what I've already got using the equipment that I'm using. It's getting quite hairy, right? We've exhausted this area, so I'm gonna go now water in me wellies <laughs> I've exhausted this area so now I'm gonna go on to location number two and hopefully I can grab one more shot before the end of the night Let's give you an update. Um, I was after being keen. Look at that. It's five to two in the morning. High tide was at half 12. I finished from the first location, came up to the second location, but clearly the high, high tide is way, way too high. So I had to make a decision, either go home and ignore this shot or hang around until the tide starts to recede. Obviously, I decided to hang around. Not sure if that was a wise idea or not, but uh, sod it, let's give it a go. Before I venture down onto the beach and start taking a few more shots, these clearly are gonna have a few more problems I'm gonna have to deal with. The tide is now receding, and I don't think I've got concrete to place my tripod legs on. I'm gonna have to try and find something that's um, more stable than wet sand wasting your time trying to place your camera down on wet sand so I'll have to find something so this is going to have a few more challenges I'm quite happy with how the first shoot went I was reviewing the pictures in the van and there's a couple of things I'm not happy with one of them is beyond my control and a second one that is within my control that I probably messed up on or not given enough thought to first of all the light on the sea, I don't like the way the light is cast on the sea. It might well be something I either learn to put up with or I can maybe change or fix in post-production. But the second one, and this is the real killer for me, is I've come here to shoot this tonight because it's a full moon. The full moon I know is I will cast a bright enough light to light up the sea over a two or a four minute, as it happens, a four minute exposure. But 
I anticipated getting a better sky than the sky I've got. Now without stating the obvious, your astrophotographers aren't out photographing night skies when it's a full moon, unless of course they're photographing the moon. <laughs> Simply because the full moon is so bright that it's going to pollute the night sky with the light. I still thought this afternoon while I was at home in my front room that I would get a better night sky than the night sky that I feel I've already captured. Right, so that might be uh, something that I've messed up with but of course it's, it's a learning process it's all about learning. Right, on to part two. Let's get down onto the beach. Wish me well. Right so the first shot is on its way a four minute exposure. Uh, the first challenge is as I said earlier wet sand so I've had to wait for the tide to go out a little bit further than I needed to just so that I was able to rest all three tripod legs on the breakwater concrete bits and pieces whatever they're called. I'm not quite sure what they're called but the little stanchions but anyway so my three legs are now currently spread really wide over three different breakwaters but at least I now know that that camera on that tripod is not going to move so a four minute exposure exactly the same thing again four minute exposure and then I'll take a separate image for the sky and that's it that should be me done and dusted it's amazing how quick the tide actually recedes pretty scary stuff really so this has been an epic challenge tonight an epic challenge I'm convinced that this was a, a complete waste of time waited two hours for the tide to go out far enough to grab the second shot and it just all happened so quick the problem was and I couldn't show you uh, on the video because obviously it was too dark but trying to get the legs uh, off the damp sand so that obviously I can extend my shutter speed for four minutes was proven to be a real nightmare so I needed the uh, sea to be out far enough so that I could prop all three legs on one of the concrete breakwaters and when I eventually did that the sea was pretty much out and just gone too far so I think the second half is a complete whitewash and the first half is probably okay but true to my word I did say that you know right or wrong work or fail I would show you the results so I'm not sure if it's now going to be back to me in the studio or if we're just going to check the results and that's going to be the end of the video. If it is the end of the, uh, end of the video, can I just say thanks a lot for watching. Sorry about the Blair Witch thing going on here tonight. I do apologise, I couldn't have shown more of, of the, the surroundings, but it is pitch black, so... I apologize about that but if you've enjoyed this content do me a favor if you want to find your way back here then subscribe to the channel and help support it by giving me a thumb up and all the rest of it till the next time guys cheers